Okay, the next call is MPI scatter. What are the parameters of MPI scatter? Again, send buffer, send count, send type, receive buffer, receive count, receive type and root and communicator ok. Let us say that you have data A, B, C on processor 0. In most of the examples, I typically end up taking rank 0 as the root, but any rank can be the root right. So, do not assume that it is only processor 0 which can be the root. Okay, so, what happens at the end of scatter? So, this is the buffer with P0, this is the buffer with P1 and P2. So, at the end of scatter, if root is uh, rank 0 and this is the buffer it provides, then at the end you are going to have B over here and C over here. Okay. So, when would you want to use MPI scatter? So, typically you know in a master slave kind of a setting, there is one processor which is like maybe reading a file or reading what is the work to be done and distributing it to other processors. When it has to distribute the data to other processors to compute, it would typically do a scatter, right. It would scatter the data to other processors, they would do their work and then come back, right. And the obvious question is how would they come back? Well, they come back using a call called MPI gather, right. This is analogous to MPI scatter, it is exactly the opposite same set of parameters. So, if you have these arrays, right, if you have these values a, b, c, right, at the end of the call, you would end up with b and c over here, right. It would gather data from all the processors to a single processor, okay. What other calls are there? There is MPI all gather. All gather is very similar to gather except that there is no root. So, what you are trying to do is you are trying to gather the data which is scattered across the processors, but eventually all the processors will have that data, ok. So, there is no need for root, there is no single processor that is special, right. So, therefore, the prototype for MPI all gather is slightly different from gather, right. The only difference is that you do not have the root, ok. All the other parameters are the same, only the root is not there. Okay. Let me step back and point something out, right. This is important that in these calls, for simplicity, I have just, you know, drawn everything together, but actually what happens is that the send buffer and the receive buffer are separate, okay. That is why unlike other calls, you will see that in scatter, gather, all gather and so on, there is a separate buffer for send and separate buffer for receive. Why is that? Because the data is not as large as uh, what you have over here, right. You have like three elements over here, but here you only have one element and one element each. So, why would you want to allocate three data elements, right? Why would you want to allocate more memory? So, to draw this actually correctly, right, what would actually happen is that this is scatter, this is what would happen. So, initially rank 0 would have this data. So, this is going to be its send buffer right, this is the send buff and rank 1 and rank 2 will point to their receive buff, which may not be exactly the same size, right. At the end, you are going to get B and C over here, right, okay. What happens in MPI all gather? Let us discuss this with separate send and receive buffers. So, these are going to be the send buffers. and there is going to be A here, B here, C here and you have separate receive buffers. Now, in this case, in case of all gather, the receive buffer is going to be much larger than the send buffer, 
right? Because at the end of the day, you have to have the data from all the processors, right? So all gather, you are going to get A, B, C over here, A, B, C over here, A, B, C over here, right? So these are your send buffers and these are your receive buffers. Is it clear? So that's for the programmer to figure out, right? It's simply the MPI data type, size of MPI data type multiplied by the number of elements, that's the count. Okay, so he knows that there are so he has to know that. Without that, the operation cannot be performed, right? Unlike send and receive, in receive, you don't know how much data you're receiving, right? But in collectives, you have to know what is the amount of data you're going to receive. Okay. 